degree outside today. Two days ago, it was minus 24 at night. That's bad for my liquid nitrogen. So I keep my liquid nitrogen under here, and um, I used to think that it was the temperature changes that affected my how quickly my liquid nitrogen would disappear. Last winter, I had this doer filled up. This is a 10 liter doer, and it's about, it ranges like 115 to $140 to fill it. Apparently, from what I understand, it's uh, kind of like a commodity, right? So it fluctuates just like gas and oil. So I filled this thing up, and last winter, I would end up getting like two and a half months of, of time, like the, the liquid nitrogen would stay in there for two and a half months, and I thought that was because it was so incredibly cold outside. But in talking with the supplier that I get my liquid nitrogen from, uh, one of the gentlemen there actually told me it has more to do with the pressure changes, right? Like with, you know, the weather system pressure changes. And to that end, um, this has been a terrible winter for my liquid nitrogen. I've had a very mild winter typically, but we'll get like minus 20 for a couple days, and then we'll be above zero. And obviously that has to do with uh, high pressure, low pressure, all these different weather systems coming in and every time it gets nice outside I get excited because I'm like woohoo but then I'm also like my liquid nitrogen uh, let's look at what we're gonna do today one thing we're not gonna do today and I, I wish we could is finish off this. This again is that barbecue type knife. I'm gonna be finishing this up next week. That's gonna get a Coca Bolo handles. But what we're gonna do today is I need to do a Kydex sheath, finish a Kydex sheath, and I pressed the sheath yesterday, and then I'm gonna make a little clip wrap. And this was a fold over sheath, right? So I'm just gonna have one set of eyelets right here. Uh, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a little standoff and a little wrap around uh, that's gonna hold the belt clip. So that'll be cool. We'll hopefully get that done today. And I've got two chunky monkeys ready to ship out. There, you see that nice scalloped scallop in there so that uh, your thumb has a nice place to rest. So anyways, I'm gonna get these sharpened up. And these ones both get leather sheaths. I've got the leather sheaths done. I finished those up yesterday, so hopefully we'll get them sharpened up, packaged up, and sent out. I got a couple knives to take to the mail, some sanding blocks to take to the mail, but uh, yeah, it's gonna be a good way to round out the week. I also need to take a trip to the dump. That thing always, always interrupts my videos. Well, that reminds me, I actually had a little tip I wanted to share with you about these automatic center punches, and uh, it's hard to share them when you're not making videos that often. Uh, this here is my automatic center punch, and I've had this one probably for three years. It stopped hitting, right? Like, it stopped going pazow, pazang, pazing. And my theory behind it is that the spring that's in these kind of gets compressed over time, and it doesn't have the, the resistance force that it's supposed to. So, to overcome that, oh, well, what I've done is I just kind of basically compressed it even more well, as I'm losing all these pieces. So here's the spring, and, and, and I think it just kind of squishes down over time and loses its boing boing. So I just took a piece, this is actually just black phenolic pin, and I made it as a spacer so that essentially I'm just putting that much extra force on the spring. And uh, it came back to life. It totally works now, and before it was not working at all, so I thought that was really, really exciting. I don't remember how this goes together. There's my heater, you gotta love the heater. I think this is how it goes together. Yeah, there we go. Anyways, thought you might like that. No way. Truck is dead. 
dead. Supposed to be a quick change of plans. We, uh, we've got some company coming for lunch, and my wife asked what we wanted, and I kind of want corn chowder, but we didn't have any corn, so I've got to run to get some corn. Unfortunately, I have to take the car. It'd be terrible if this battery was dead too. There we go. Got our groceries. Hi, Rosie. Hi, Graham. Hi, can I just get a large black coffee? Is that everything? That's all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, too. Now, you see these wood railings? That's, well, we have to have those there because we haven't done the uh, main hand railings on our deck, so we have to have these there so kids don't fall off. This spring, we're gonna get rid of that. We're gonna make a nice hand railing for our deck. Alright, so we've got the main part of the sheath done. What we're gonna do now, I've showed this in other videos, but I just figured I'd show you again. Obviously, I mean, if I attach it to the eyelets there, uh, with a blade like this, it's gonna, it's not gonna hang properly, right? So, I usually like to get my belt clip in line with the handle, and to do that, we're gonna take a piece of Kydex, wrap it around here, and we're gonna create a space in here for the fasteners. So, I just got this little piece of G10, I'm gonna slap this right like that, and we'll heat up a piece of Kydex and bring it around here. And uh, that should space it just enough. That'll just bring it just nicely, just a perfect amount of clearance in there. And then we'll have a little standoff so we can bolt this on and uh, set it up for a nice hip carry. Alrighty, let's see how this thing looks. Oops. Alright, so what I'm gonna do now, uh, because I didn't get enough 
pressure. I didn't get the indentation that I, that I usually get to mark the eyelets. What I will do is I'll kind of get this set where it's supposed to be. Take a fairly robust clamp. It's the old uh, cant twist clamps. It's a great choice because it's not going to spin around. Clamp that on there fairly nice and rigid. And that will hold that. So what I can do now, I can a little tighter. I can mark these two holes. So actually what, what I did is I just peeled it back and uh, use the transfer punch. And I'll be able to hold it peeled back like this, drill this side through, and that way we'll get a really nice accurate holes in there. This is line up perfect. Boom, just like that. I like it, I like it a lot. Let's go ahead and mark out these holes. Go right there. All right, we're gonna go ahead and get this assembled. These hand, handheld countersinks are really handy for Kydex. It's a little thing, but I always like to line up my screws. Now we're just gonna put this on and kind of mark it. And I'll mark where I gotta trim this to. And I always like to get this clip part, this little standoff thing put on first, tightened up before I do my final fit, if I have to use the heat gun and adjust the retention of the Kydex, because this can affect that sometimes. So I always find it helps. I don't get too worried about the retention until everything has been bolted up, how it's going to be in the final iteration, and then I'll adjust and tweak the lock and everything like that because you never know what putting this stuff on is going to do to it and how it might affect it. Yeah, it stiffened it up a bit. So we'll have to finagle that. So we're going to cut this out, cut this down to there, flatten everything up, and then we're going to install it and see what it looks like. All right, now I just need to do the final assembly. All right, so we just finished up the sheath and uh, turned out pretty good. We have it right here. Um, now that we've got the tape off of the knife, I will, uh, I'm actually gonna put my maker's mark on it. We'll sharpen it up and then we'll put it into here and just check for the final fit. I heard a really cool tip. Uh, Grady Jarman, uh, Shady Grady on the old Instagram. I'll put a link in his Instagram below. Oh, there's my heater, listen. I used to use this white vinyl and I cut out my, my logo, the E in Homestead Knives, and he gave me a really awesome tip. He told me that, oh, use clear vinyl. And that is a brilliant, brilliant idea. Grady, thank you so much for that great tip. So now I can actually see exactly where the E is gonna be placed. Get the old one to Markaroo. There we go. Just like that. I might do another video soon about the different sharpeners that I use because I get asked a lot on social media, uh, on Instagram in particular, probably, I don't know, every other day at least people ask me about what I prefer to sharpen with. And I've had quite a few different sharpening gizmos, but uh, anyways, we're gonna sharpen this up with the paper wheels. Happy with that, that's for sure. All right, well there it is, it's all done. Hangs nice. Pops out. Nice little blade at the ready. Nice little click. Actually really like the way this one actually stays nice and straight up and down, so should be a good usable blade. Wow. All right, so 
The only thing left to do with this one is to package it up all nice and neatly, put it in a box, ship it off. I've got a few other knives I'm shipping off today, um, but we're gonna end the vlog right here because I don't, I don't think that'd be very exciting. I hope you enjoyed this video. Hopefully maybe you learned something. And uh, yeah, if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you have not done so already. And as always, I thank you so much for watching. Cheers.